Good morning and welcome to the Heidelberg Engineering Academy. Thank you for joining today's presentation, Wide Field Imaging, Non-Contact Ultra Wide Field, presented by Amanda Bai. My name is Jocelyn Gageway and I'll be your moderator today. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that your lines have been muted to prevent any feedback. Please hold all questions until the end of the webinar. This course has been recorded and will be placed on our website for review. Now, without further ado, I am pleased to present Amanda Bai. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking time out and attending the Wide Field Imaging uh, Non-Contact Ultra Wide Field for our Spectralis system. Um, today, we're strictly going to be talking about non-contact wide field imaging with the Spectralis system uh, in regards to angiography, and of course, talking about the new lens that's coming out, the ultra wide field lens. So, just a quick overview. We're going to discuss why we do wide field imaging, and then of course the family of lenses we have for the spectral system to accomplish this. Talk about, briefly, talk about some of the old ways to do imaging, which are still very valid, and then of course talk about uh, the newer techniques for ultra-wide field imaging. And then of course, how to use the ultra-wide field lens. So, why do we use a wide field lens? Well, here is a photo of a 30-degree field view with our standard lens, and we can see very clearly the macula, the disc, a very unremarkable FA image. However, if you use the ultra-wide field lens during the angiography, you can see there is quite a few things to remark upon in this image. So why we do it? To document the peripheral retina, and it's essential for doctors so that they can diagnose and treat the patient. So in comparison, here's our three options we have for non-contact ultra-wide field angiography. We have at the upper left our 30 degree field view, and right below that our 55 degree image, and then of course on the right our ultra-wide field image. Quite obvious. <laughs> so what are the lenses that we can use? Well, right now, currently, the lenses that we can have for this system are a 30-degree lens, which is standard with all of our systems, 55-degree, our new uh, ultra-wide field lens, which is over to the right, and then we also have our contact ultra-wide field lens, the Sterangi lens, and then our interior segment lens. Well, of course, for this purpose, we're not doing wide field imaging with an anterior segment lens, so we're not going to discuss that. And then Sterangi is a contact lens, so we're just really going to focus in on these three lenses here. So just a quick feedback or uh, going through our lenses. We have our 30-degree lens here, standard, comes with all the systems, and then an FA image with the 30-degree lens. And as we can see here, it's a smaller, more magnified field of view, but we catch a lot of detail and are able, co able to control focus and brightness in that area. And that's one of the benefits of that lens. Um, so we can magnify interest, brightness and focus in smaller sections. This of course is non-contact. And what's great about using a 30 degree lens during an FA is if you wanted to do an OCT during the angiography, it's a very quick switch. And that's because we can only do of course OCTs with the 30 degree lens. Some of the drawbacks, if you wanted to image out for a montage, you obviously are going to have to take multiple images, which e equates to more time. Um, with that, sometimes when you go to put together those single images in the acquisition uh, or in the image window, it sometimes you may have double uh, vessel doubling or missing fields in that final composite. And now our 55 degree lens. We can see it protrudes a little bit further out, and when you do go to switch the lenses, you'll notice it's a little bit heavier. And then of course the image on the right, we notice that we have even brightness and it's pretty sharp. It's sharp all the way around. So, and that's one of the benefits. You have a larger field of view. Uh, peripheral imaging, you may just have to do maybe one or two extra images depending on what you're looking at. And again, this is non-contact. And you get a pretty wide field of view when doing those extra images. Some of the drawbacks. It is close working distance to the patient, so you may have to reassure your patient or clean your lens maybe a little more often. And this, unfortunately, we can't do OCTs through. 
And just like the 30 degree lens, if you're doing multiple individual fields and you go to put them together, you may have vessel doubling or um, missing fields in the final composite. So here, then we now have our ultra-wide field lens. And you'll notice, of course, that the bellows are fully extended, as well as the lens is quite large. But looking to the right, we notice we have a very large field of view that is evenly illuminated and very sharp edge to edge. And that's really one of the benefits is one, non-contact with approximately 102 degree field view. So peripheral imaging, it's, it's one stop shopping, truly. Just one image and you're good. The drawback, of course, very close working distance to the patient and no OCTs. So before we move on, let's talk about just making sure everyone knows how to uh, switch lenses properly. So on the 30 degree lens, make sure we grab the collar. We're going to twist to the left, listen for a click, and then when you pull off the lens, you'll notice there are two red dots, just like any of the SLR systems on any kind of camera. And then when you remove the lens, put it in the wooden box that comes with it. I can't stress that enough. I think a lot of people have had damage to their lenses because they don't put it back in the right spot. And then when we grab the 55, we're just going to place the red dots. Again, line them up. Okay. Twist to the right and realign the red dots. Listen for the click. If you don't hear the click, do not take the lens off. Or don't remove your hand because the lens might fall off. And then that's what our 55 will look like on the front. Do not switch lenses while in a live mode. You could lose any unsaved images and funny air messages might pop up. So make sure you save your images, power down the camera, and then switch your lenses. Okay. Let's also talk about, for the 30 and 55, how to get the wider field image with what we currently have with our Spectralis system. So we have our seven fields, we have our 3x3 three three automated composite, and then our composite paint feature. So with the seven fields, we see we just have a field two image here up, and then we have the, uh, the, the graph to the right, the ETDRS graph, that if you've ever shot an image for studies before, this should look very familiar, and you're quite used to doing the fields, and in stereo for that matter. Okay. So when you take those individually, and then we go into the image window and stitch them together, this is our resulting image. We get a wide field image throughout um, covering the arcades, but again we see there is just a little bit of that vessel doubling that may occur. But again, each individual slide is, you can control each individual image for brightness, focus, all that good stuff. So putting those seven fields on top of the ultra-wide field, we see we're still covering a lot more area. Okay? We can end with one image versus doing the seven plus if we needed to. So for the automated 3x3, three three, <coughs> excuse me, for your touch panel, you want to, when you turn it on, click the button next to the single image. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, for most of your systems, especially if you do angiography, it might say movie max. You'll have to click on that and click on it again. Uh, little tip, anything on the touch panel that has a yellow outline around it, like we see around the more button or the fixation grid, means that there's obviously more behind there. So you'll essentially click that where it says composite 3x3 three three when we get to that screen behind Movie Max. And when we do that, let me go back a slide, it's actually going to move that internal fixation light to all nine positions and then you'll just line up your image, take the image, and it'll automatically stitch it together for the image that we see here. Okay. For the paint composite, same thing on the touch panel. We want to go behind that Movie Max selection and choose composite. Now this one, it's kind of a paint with light feature. So when we do this, you'll want to line up your image, get a just a posterior pole type image up on screen, Make sure you have even illumination throughout. And you're going to hit the tracking button, which will put us into the mode we currently see here. And you're going to use the swings and tilts of the camera head while moving around the back of the fundus. 
Now it's very important when doing this to use external fixation and not internal fixation so that we can cover larger areas. Wonderful. And then our resulting image is something that we see here. I like the pink composite best um, just because you tend to get uh, less vessel doubling and you can always go back over areas that weren't properly exposed or have focus issues. So, and here's our image for that non-contact ultra-wide field lens. You can do fluorescenes, ICGs, uh, individually or simultaneously with this lens. And again, what we notice about this, it's sharp all the way around and it's evenly illuminated. So how does it compare to the 30 and the 55 then? Well, we can see that we have a 30 degree in that yellow box and then the 55 in the orange. And again, we're just covering a whole lot more ground with one image, so a lot less work for doing fields. So with our lens, we're able to do a polarized infrared photo, fluorescing, and ICG, in which we see here. Okay? So how do we put on the lens? How do we start this process to do an angiogram? What you'll want to do is start by pulling the camera back all the way on the base and locking it into position. You're then going to power on the system and change the focus to plus 45 or fully extend the bellows. And then you're going to want to turn off the system. And why do we do this? Because we never want to switch the lenses while the system is running. Um, you will get error messages. If you will get problems or lose any unsaved images. Okay. So, when we remove the 30 degree lens, here's what our ultra wide field lens is going to look like. You're going to notice that there are two lens caps, okay, and there's the little red dot. Again, just like the 30 and the 55, you're going to line up the little red dot, place the barrel um, into the bellows, and then turn to the right to hear a click. And this is what it, what it should look like. Now for some of you, you're probably looking at the filter position and saying, that's not what my filter wheel looks like. Some of you may or may not have this filter wheel or have the ability to do the polarized IR. It's just going to depend on your system. However, we now still have A for our angiography, for our FA and ICG positioning, and P is going to be used for the polarized infrared, but you're not going to use the R and the S position for it. Now, if you by happen or happen by chance to be in the RS position, you're going to get this error message and that tiny little text says acquisition currently not possible. So the system's going to let you know that we can't do anything with these positions. So you'll have to change it to the P or the A position. So just make sure it's lined up in the P position if you want to do the polarized infrared and then switch it to the A when you're ready to do the fluorescein and the ICG. So after we get the lens on, everything's lined up, we're going to power back on the system and you're going to notice your settings are going to be a little bit different both on your touch panel and on the screen. What you want to do is adjust your focus to zero um, and you're going to notice that it doesn't move in quarter increments anymore, that it's going to move in increments of about two diopters. Okay? And also on your touch panel, you're going to see that you have three new angles available, 51, 68, and 102. And 102 is going to be the default image um, for your system. So after we get the lens on, patient forward, we're going to line up our patient. And as you'll see here, the lens gets very close to the eye. Um, that's just part of the nature of this lens. And you'll also notice that the patient isn't looking directly into the lens. You'll want to turn the patient's head a little to the left or right so that their nose is a little bit further away from the lens for more comfort and so that you don't brush up against them. This is also the way to do it for deep set eyes. Again, you're just going to have them turn their head a little bit more, look right down the center of the lens, and line them up. Now, you can use the internal fixation or external fixation or verbally guide them, whatever works best, of course, for your patient for fixation purposes. So for your FAs, complete them as you normally do. Use your usual route um, 
of times, whatever you need to do um, for your doctor. Okay. So, for example, we have an FAICG combination. And again, we have equal brightness, sharpness throughout. That looks really good. Good. And so we have our ultra-wide field FA image. Now, we're not just limited to this view here. We can actually do fields like we do with the 30 and the 55, as we see here. The way you do that is just like fields with the 30 or the 55. Readjust your patient's position and fixation. So again, maybe change the position of their head, their view, what you normally would do. So we could actually go out and see further fields from our original image. So of course the image in the middle is looking right down the barrel, and then we can see all throughout um, the rest of the fundus just by moving their eye position. Okay. And again, single images. And there we have it. Okay. So just a couple reminders. Always save your images prior to switching lenses. Using the external fixation or tilting the patient's head for the further periphery images is really beneficial. And keep your lenses clean. And we recommend at Heidelberg you don't use any uh, Kim wipes or any type of sprays. Just fog it up with your breath and use a microfiber cloth gently with circular motions from the inside out. And again, a bolus injection of FA or ICG followed by the saline flush will really give you a better quality image, especially in that early phase. So I just want to give a very special thank you to everyone here who donated their images, their time, uh, to make this presentation. Thank you to all. And of course, if you ever have any questions, about the ultra-wide field lens or any of the spectralis options. We have our telephone support, our online support, and of course, you guys can always give me a call as well. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Amanda, for that excellent presentation. As a reminder, this course has been recorded and will be placed on our website for your review. Thank you. My name is Jocelyn Gageway, and this has been a presentation of the Heidelberg Engineering Academy. I hope you all have a pleasant day on behalf of all of us here at Heidelberg Engineering.